the first thing to kind of keep, keep in mind, I've said it a few times, is when you're doing problems with normal distribution, there's infinite shapes and sizes of the normal distribution because you have a mean and you have a standard deviation, which is going to govern the shape of it. We convert it to different z-scores. Uh, we, we convert it to a standard normal distribution so we can uh, use our table. So for instance, I'm not going to give you an actual problem yet, but in many cases, let's say you might have a problem that ends up boiling down after you convert it to the standard normal distribution. You might have um, a, normal a standard normal distribution that might look like something like this, and in your particular problem, you find out that uh, here you have some value of negative z because this is, let's say, zero, this is positive z-scores, and these are negative z-scores. You might find out in the course of your problem that for whatever it is you're trying to calculate, you're trying to find the area under this curve uh, to the left like this. Now, what I want to point out to you is the table that I'm going to show you in this lesson, along with 90% of all the tables that you'll find in your textbooks, they're going to give you, what you do is you end up looking up the z-score, which is a number, like negative 1.5, let's say, for z, and what it's going to give you is the area from this point of z to negative infinity. In other words, it'll give you the shaded area here from whatever value I look up at z off to the left, all right? So every now and then you'll get a weird chart that gives you the area to the right of z, but almost every chart out there, when you look up a value of z and you find the value in the table, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, and you, you get the area underneath that curve, it's giving you the area from that value of z on to the left. Now remember, this curve never really touches the x-axis, or this axis down here. So it's it's they use calculus to find these answers because this area kind of goes on and on and on and gets smaller and smaller. But when you sum all of that up, you can arrive at an answer that would, that would show you this value of this area. And that's what's tabulated in the chart. Another quick example, if I had standard normal distribution that looked like this. I'm just going to draw another one. Nothing special about this. I'm just basically drawing normal distributions here. And let's say I have a value of z let's say 2.3. This is a value of z of 2.3, and I'm interested in finding, uh, when I want to look this value up in the chart, what am I going to see? Well, the chart is going to tabulate the surface area that is underneath this graph from the value of z that I look up all the way to negative infinity, this entire tail that goes this direction, everything up in the normal curve up until the value of z that I care about. So no matter if you're looking at a negative value of z or a positive value of z, you're always getting the area to the left. All right, That's important because not all problems are going to be phrased that way, but you need to know that that's how the table works. So a lot of times your problem might be easy and you just look the answer up and circle it. Sometimes you might have to do some things with the answers that you get out of the table and do some calculations with those to get what you're after, but you need to know how the table functions. The table functions by giving you the area always to the left of whatever value uh, you look up. So um, let me show you, let's take an example real quick. Examples worth, you know, a thousand words really. Let's say that I have a z value of 2.35 and I want to find the area to the left of the z value of z is equal to 2.35. So if you think about it, what, what we're asking here is if this is our normal distribution, I've kind of almost drawn it here just a minute ago because I had 2.3 on the board. So if this is 1, this is 2, and then we say here's 3. So right around here, let me change colors here. If this is z is equal to 1, so this is values of z, if this is z is equal to 1, z is equal to 2, z is equal to 3. So right around here is 2.35. So we're asked, find the area to the left of this underneath the normal distribution. So when we use our z-chart table, we're going to be calculating the area all the way to the left under the curve, all the way to negative infinity in this tail way down here, but only from the value of 2.35. So how do we use our table? So I encourage you to open your book to the appendix, find the table of, it might be labeled something different, it might say standard normal curve, it might say table of z-scores. But anyway, probably Appendix A is probably going to be one of the most important things in your book. Flip back there, take a look, and compare it to what I've got here. Now in my hand, and on your screen, I've got the table of uh, 
values here. So in my particular table, I have negative z-scores, which are values to the left of zero, and I have positive z-scores, which are val uh, you know, the positive ones to the right. But in, in all cases, no matter what I look up on this table, when I get the answer, it's always giving me the area to the left of z, all the way going to negative infinity like that. So in our case, let's look up 2.35. So you see there's a column here It says z. So if you go down here, you can see there's z is equal to 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and so on. So if you go all the way down here, you'll look for 2.35. But you'll get to 2.3, but then there's 2.4 right underneath it. There is no 2.35. So you might give up and say, that's hard. Well, the way you use this table is you go to 2.3. Now you want to get to 2.35. So you're already at 2.3. You scroll across this row until you hit the top column of 0.05. So you have to read the, the initial column off to the left and also the top uh, row up there to get the full number. So 2.3 locks down your row. You move to the right until you end up at the proper column with 0.05. So you're kind of adding them together. So you get 2.35. So whenever you look at the intersection of those two things, the answer you get is 0.99. 06. So you get 0 0.9906. So the way you'd write that down is the area is equal to 0 0.9906 and that is the answer. Now don't worry about necessarily what this means because we haven't, I mean you know it's the area, we haven't locked it down to an actual word problem or a statistical problem, we're just learning how to use the table. So I'm telling you give me the area to the left of the z value and we're finding this out. This is a probability is, you know, probability is what we get when we look at area under this curve here. It's a pretty high probability, but later on we're going to be uh, reading problems and it'll be phrased in terms of, hey, find the probability of la la la, and you'll have to use these normal curves to calculate it. So right now we're just looking this value up in the chart, getting the area. So let's do another one of these guys. Let's find the area, the area to the left of, um, z is equal to negative 1.25, negative 1.25. All right, so again, all you have to do, since you're trying to find the area to the left, that is exactly what the chart is set up to give you, the area to the left of the z-score. So all you have to do is look the z-score up, read the number, and that's your answer in this case. We're just, just getting our feet wet with learning how to use this chart. So let's look a value of negative 1.25 uh, up in our chart. So we go over here. And we know, it's pot, we know it's negative, so we're going to look on the left-hand side for the z-score that's negative 1.25. So we'll find negative 1.2. It jumps from 1.2 to 1.3. So there is no exact value on the left-hand side. So we need to obviously use that row, negative 1.2, and scroll over uh, until we get to the 0.05 column. So that's negative 1.25. So the answer we get is 0.1056. So the area is equal to negative 0.1056. The reason you can just read it right off the chart is because they're asking you what is the area to the left of this z under a standard normal distribution. And so if you wanted to draw a picture of this, it's kind of like one of the ones we looked at a minute ago, but we'll just kind of do it for kicks here. Here's a standard normal distribution, and here's a value of this is z, right? This is the value of negative 1. This is the value of negative 2. The value of z that we actually care about is negative 1.25, which is right around here, right? So we'll draw that and we'll say negative 1.25. And so we go up here and we're trying to find the area to the left of that. So this answer that we got out of the chart is actually the area underneath this curve from negative 1.25 off to negative infinity. If we had used calculus to actually do the math and calculate this area exactly, we would get the same thing. We're just tabulating it to make it a little bit faster and a little bit easier. All right, so let's go and do another one of these guys, get a little bit of practice. Let's find the area to the left of z is equal to two. Z is equal to two. So this is a little different because there's no decimal after it. Let's just see and make sure that it works. So we jump into our chart and we look at the positive values of z until we get to 2 and we see there is a 2.0. We don't need to go way down the row there. We just go to the very first entry because the very first column is 0, 0.00. That means we don't add any numbers really. So we're, we're right at z is equal to 2.0. 
So you get 9772. So you get 0 0.9772, that's the area, like that. And that's the answer. Now let's just see and make sure that all of these things make sense. Uh, just intuitively. Now you know that this is a probability distribution. The area under the whole thing is 1, right? So in the first case, we're trying to find a tiny little area from negative 1.25 off to the left, and we get an answer that's pretty small, pretty close to 0, because we're just having a very small area here, 0 0.1056. All right? Then when we get to this case, when we have 2.35, which is way over here to the right, the answer we get is 0 0.9906 because notice we almost have the entire curve shaded. If you shade the entire thing, you should get an exact area of 1, right? So we get very close to 1.9906. And then finally, in the last case, when we look at z is equal to 2, we have something in the middle, which is 0.9772. This is the area here. In other words, if you look at this, this one should be more area shaded than the other one because it goes to 2.35. And because there's more area shaded, this number is larger than this number because this is a less area there. So I guess I just want to intuitively tell you the larger the z-score you get, look at on this table, the closer that number is going to be to 1. If you have a very big negative z-score, you're just going to have a tiny sliver of area off on the left, and so the number is going to be very, very close to 0. That is essentially how you use the table. I'm going to show you how to continue to use them for different kinds of problems in the next couple of sections. The other thing I want to tell you, though, is, is that the table I'm using here, the table I like to use, and in fact your book, your book might have it as well, has the table of positive z-values and negative z-values. So you can look up positive 2.4 for z and get an answer. You can look up negative 2.4 for z and get an answer. But some books like to save paper and they only give you half the table. They only give you the positive z-scores and that's because this is a symmetric curve. So you don't really have to print both sides. You can calculate the answers. There's ways to calculate the answers if you only have half of a table. I'm showing it to you as if you have the entire table positive and negative z-scores. I encourage you to use a table that has positive and negative z-scores because it's faster. You don't have to do any thinking. You just look the value up, read the value off, and then you're done. So if the back of your book only gives you the positive z-scores, then I would just go on the web and download one that has both sides. There's hundreds of them for free. Uh, there and it'll make your life easier. There is a way to deal with it when you only have half the table, but it's just not worth the time, in my opinion. So make sure you understand this. Follow me on to the next lesson where we will continue uh, using these z-scores, reading the uh, areas off the table to continue to solve statistical problems. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.